Good morning and welcome to prayer and devotion on this Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, June 28th. That was um, BYU's uh, a cappella group Vocal Point singing I Need Thee Every Hour uh, arranged by McKay Crockett. So I hope you enjoyed that. I really like the... Um, uh, the the <laughs> Brigham Young University, their a cappella groups are phenomenal. They're so good. Um, so I do enjoy, I may not theologically um, connect with, but I love the way they, 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 they arrange these hymns and share them with you. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, and it's good to be with all of you this morning. This morning, our devotion is entitled Simplifying, Simplifying to Strike a Balance. Um, and we're going to be looking uh, at Luke 12, Luke 12, uh, verses 32 through 34. So if you want to open up, let me say uh, good morning to Donna and to Blanca. It's good to have you here today, holding you both in prayer. And Cecilia and Admire, I'm glad you're here, excuse me, as well, holding you in prayer today. Good morning, Daniel and Michelle in Cancun. I hope you're having a good time. Uh, thank you for waking up to join us, holding you in prayer and all, your whole family today as well. Uh, 
Good morning, Barbara. Got to see more pictures of that beautiful grandchild of yours holding you all in prayer. Uh, what a blessing. Good morning, Marilyn, and good morning, Gail. I'm glad you're both here praying for you this day. And Margarita and Jerry, welcome, holding you both in prayer uh, also. Good morning, Janet. And Genevieve, I'm glad you're both here holding you in prayer. And Augusta and Betty, I am glad you are here also holding you in prayer. Good morning, Celia and Shelly. Welcome, praying for you today. And Debbie and Sheila, it's good to have you here today holding you in prayer. And good morning, Vinette. Thank you for traveling mercies, praying for traveling mercies for all those that are going to be traveling. Um, and so, yeah, we're here. We're actually traveling up to Boston on Thursday. If you've got some prayers, Mark just got COVID. So we are going to um, isolate in two cars to go up to Boston and then bring him home and isolate here and leave the next day. So he's fine, but he's got COVID now. So these things happen in this world today. Um, but yeah, so thank you for the traveling mercies. Thank you for the prayer. I, I Donna, I too will miss being with all of you for six weeks. <clears throat> but I, I do look forward to, to sleeping in just a little bit in the mornings uh, and being recharged and renewed to be able to come back with you. So I mentioned, I just wanna show you this before I get into today's lotion. This is, and I'm gonna read from this on Thursday, which is our last prayer and devotion. Um, so this is the book that I've been talking about that I'm going to be reading through. It's To Bless the Space Between Us by John O'Donohue. And <clears throat> I'll, read, I'll read some of it for you on Thursday. If you're interested, you don't have to. It's Celtic um, uh, focus, which is Lovely. I, I love all different. I also have a Native American that I'm looking at and, and some Latin American theology that I'll be reading through while I'm away too. So um, there's so much good stuff out there. Really, really good stuff. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. But today we are in Luke 12, Luke 12, beginning in verse 32. So uh, if you want to hop there. My name is Cindy Stauffer. If this is the first time that you've found us, uh, I am the pastor at the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick. You can find us on the corner of George and Liberty Street, serving dinner every night into the city, uh, worshiping on Sundays at 11. Uh, there's so many wonderful things that are happening in the midst of that city and, and in the midst of our community there. So I'm glad you found us. Maybe you can go further and find us for worship someday. That would be wonderful. Um, I feel like I was going to say something else to you, but I can't remember it. So let's just get right into scripture. Luke 12, verse 32. Do not be afraid, little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, sell your possessions, and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out. An unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. <clears throat> Simplifying to strike a balance. Organizing our spaces is getting a lot of attention these days. We've got Marie Kondo and all kinds of, of ways that you can organize your houses, organize your life. And the wellness benefits of taking time to sort and simplify are selling a lot of books. And it's for a good reason. Simplifying is good for our souls. And it's wisdom 
God gave long before any books were written on the subject. God knows that what we spend the majority of our time working for and maintaining will in turn take a great deal of room in our heads and in our hearts. So what we spend, I'm going to say it one more time, what we spend the majority of our time working for and maintaining will in turn take a great deal of room in our heads and in our hearts. It's, it's not that God doesn't want us to enjoy the fruits of our hard work or to spend resources on the things that we love to do. The secret is keeping a balance. And balancing has everything to do with what's going on in our hearts. We know when our hearts are consumed by things, and so does God. This is a quote by Arthur W. Pink. So long as we are, are occupied with any other subject than God himself, there will be neither rest for the heart nor peace for the mind. So long as we are occupied with any other object than God, there will be neither rest for the heart nor peace for the mind. Being occupied to the point of obsession or exhaustion is not God's best for our lives. God wants us to focus our time and energy on the things that God knows will bring fulfilling lives and eternal rewards. Stacking up and storing material possessions won't do that. It's amazing how clearing out and minimizing even one area in our homes or our lives can make us feel lighter, both physically and mentally. A lighter heart and mind leaves more room for God to work through our lives. Nothing on this earth matters more. We aren't here long and there are a lot of people. I'm gonna say a prayer for that situation. We aren't here long, and there are a lot of people longing to see the love of God. Let's pray for the chance to show them today. So, I've often thought about this part of scripture and questioned, where is my heart today? You know, where is my heart today? I would like to say over the over the scope of my life that my heart was with God but the question is where is my heart today and it is easy so incredibly easy to get drawn away um, now that doesn't mean that God um, you know people come to the scripture and they're like God wants me to give everything have nothing for myself and it's, and it's, and, and, you know, just to give it away and live as a pauper or, you know what I mean? Like there, there's this like sense that I think this is too much. I think God is asking too much. Um, Jesus's words here are just too oppressive. Who can follow that? Who could really follow that? And, um, and that's true. It, it is a lot none of us sell all of our stuff. There are, there are some people, but very few of us. But that isn't the point. The point is that there are things in our lives that become the center part, center point, where all of our energy, and sometimes it's not things, sometimes it's worries. I mean, right before this, he's talking about worries. What are the worries that consume your life. Maybe you're worrying about your stuff, but maybe you're just worrying about your your job or maybe you're worrying about a relationship. Maybe you're so worried 
um, that <clears throat> you're not going to be able to keep up the living that you have. And so you've, you're, you're striving after more and more. And the problem is that when we get into that striving place, it becomes the center of our being. If we, are, if we are constantly striving after something, it becomes our main focus. What can I do to make sure this happens? What can I do to ensure these things are here? How can I keep, you know, whatever it is that, that, that we are striving to keep in place, as if we have no other choice but to do this. Um, but we have, always have choices. And that's all, what, all of that stuff that I was just talking about, that's all fear-based. If I don't do this, if I don't do this, if I'm not here, if I'm not in the midst of this, then everything will fall apart. That is all fear-based. It is not based on faith. Um, and so today, um, what is it? Where is your heart today? I mean, that's the question. What are the things that are making you anxious or the things that you feel you've got to do to, to deal with? You've got to accomplish this. And I will tell you that I have been there. I will tell you that probably I am there. If you were there on Sunday, you heard me talking about how I needed to hear God's voice more, more strongly. But even as I get closer to the time away, <clears throat> my voice is, what are the things in place? What didn't you put in place? What happens if this is not in place while you're gone? I mean, th these are the things that I, that I spend time thinking about. And then I hear the voice of my member saying, Pastor, we got this. God's got this. God's got this. So today, where is your heart? Because if your heart is with your creator, if your heart is focused on what God is doing through you, you will be able to rest knowing it's going to be okay. It's all going to be okay. It may not look like you want it to look. It may not look like I want it to look. But in God's hands, it's going to be okay. So today, where is your heart? As we come into this time of prayer, I invite you to lift up those things. You know, those things that you feel like you've been trying to, to hold up. I imagine Moses with his arms and, the, and everyone coming around to hold his arms up. What are the things that you feel like you just cannot hold up anymore? And I invite you to lay them down. Or, if you're too afraid to lay them down, I invite you to imagine the Spirit of God coming and lifting your arms up so that you don't have to do it anymore. Let us pray. God, we come before you today, and there are so many things that consume our hearts and minds. There are so many burdens that we are trying to hold up. There are so many situations that we can't seem to get control of. And so we come before you today acknowledging that you have not always been the treasure of our heart. You have not always been first in our thoughts. That we have let the things of the world be replaced, replacing you in our lives. And that has been exhausting. And so today, Lord, we come before you in need of your grace, in need of um, the peace that you bring. We need to be reminded that some of these burdens were not given by you. They're not even things that we should be dealing with. 
they actually belong to someone else. And so Lord, help us to lay them down. Help us to replace those burdens, replace that striving, replace those voices of unworthiness with your voice, with your will, with your way, that we might trust you more fully and find the simplicity that you so long for us to have. Lord, we want to know this day where our treasure is. What is the treasure in our heart? And if it isn't you, Lord, forgive us and help us to start again. For you alone are our treasure. You alone have the power to satisfy our deepest longings. We need you every hour. Every hour. So be with us this day, Lord, filling our hearts and our minds that we might walk in your way. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus, the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So, what is in your heart this day? Can you lay it down? Can you lay those burdens down? And trust that God will, has entered in. God loves you, my friends, and so do I. Have a very blessed day, and I will see you back here tomorrow, Wednesday. Bye, friends.